I got a big mouth, you know, I talk from my heart, I'm real, you know what I'm saying, whatever comes, comes. But my controversy probably, and it's not my fault, I'm trying to find my way in the world, you know, I'm trying to be somebody instead of just make money off everybody, you know what I'm saying, and so I, I go down paths that haven't been traveled before and I usually mess up, but I learn, you know what I'm saying, I come back stronger, you know, I'm not talking ignorant, you know what I'm saying, so I obviously put thought into what I do. The karma, everything that you do bad comes back to me. So anything that I'm doing that's bad, I'm gonna have to suffer for. But in my heart, I think what I'm doing is right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think heaven is just when you sleep, you sleep with a good conscience. You don't have nightmares. Good hell is what's going on it's your girl queen queen and this is hot topic let's jump right on into it congresswoman ayanda presley won medicare to cover weeds so the congresswoman uh ayanda is basically fighting to cover she wants medicare to cover weeds uh and the reason why she wants that is because she said she dealt with alopecia and she also dealt with another type of disease that caused her to have hair loss and she was saying that basically you know she know how it feel to be a woman and you're already challenging your health and stuff like that so something that she would love for uh medicare and you know different type of medicaid to cover is wigs wigs for um wigs for women that are dealing with her loss now what do you guys think do you feel like the tax money is worth it do you feel like that that's something that you can agree to you feel like that, hey that's very reasonable my outlook on it is that i do think that that is a good thing if they are dealing if they're diagnosed with alopecia or any type of disease that caused them or any type of health sickness that caused them to have hair loss if that's something that they choose to do is to wear wigs and hair units and stuff like that then i do agree to getting them that because as a woman everybody is not as comfortable with uh basically you know losing certain type of things me personally i cut my hair i wear long short medium it doesn't matter but that's because i have the confidence and the power to know who i am regardless i'm not saying that the people that do not want to wear a bald head or you know wear short hair and stuff like that is something wrong with them because sometimes it just doesn't fit them and i feel like that you know their head might be you know shaped a certain type of way so of course they feel like they're wearing their hair long and beautiful or wearing it to a certain type of color or a certain type of technique it works for them so i do agree and i do think that that is such a wonderful thing that she's fighting because a lot of women don't have money to afford a good uh wig and stuff like that now on the other hand i try to be funny but baby i try i want to see a diagnosis don't be going into no i don't want nobody trying to get no wig and they ain't dealing with no alopecia or no disease they just did it from a bad scalp because you ain't take care of your hair period if your edges is gone because you've been wearing lace fronts since you was five years old that ain't our problem i'm sorry i'm sorry to you in that hair line because that's something that you bought on yourself if you've been wearing them braids with them african women but they even braid up your baby hair that ain't our problem you know what i'm saying you gonna have to take this L and go on and get you some new growth and start massaging it around your edges because we can't be for that you see what i'm saying so i don't want these women that sitting out here and you know for a fact that you dealing with her loss on your own reasons because of the products and the techniques and the different type of stuff that you put in your head and how you be snatching at your head then don't go up there talking about some oh yeah i agree with this and i need this this and that no because i don't want nobody running around here talking about they need two three hundred dollars a week and you know say you to buy out your own edges and you trying to get you trying to get us to pay for it no and I ain't trying to be funny. I got a lot of her wigs. I didn't got a lot of pictures of a lot of her wigs that I probably didn't pay $19.99. But that's another thing too. Some of y'all too a little too bougie for me with no money. So it's kind of like I hopefully I hope y'all ain't running around here talking about so uh oh I need to go to Keisha. She got a five hundred dollar unit and I could get it on Medicaid or Medicare. No, you know what I'm saying? So I do feel like that that's a good gesture for her, but I also feel like that she definitely needs to uh she definitely need to have some type of restriction i think that it do need to be diagnosed i feel like that they do need to have like a health thing and i do also feel like it might need to be a certain type of variety like hey you can go to these certain type of beauty supplies or you can also go to these type of people to get the units people that has been certified and stuff like that to make special units and then like yeah just do it like that what are you guys thoughts on that do you feel like that no that should not be something 
that uh that should be covered or do you feel like that hey you do feel like it's a good gesture and why <clears throat> okay teen father charged with murder after killing newborn son to afford child support so a Texas teen was arrested and charged with death of his newborn son. Authorities says he committed the act to avoid paying child support. <clears throat> so I really just want to sum it up that a teenage uh, boy has basically killed the newborn baby because he did not want to pay child support. And this is very sad. Oh my God, this is so sad. It's so sad to know that that is the first thing that comes to people's mind once they're having a baby in this world and you're talking about child support, let me just keep it real with you. That child support, I ain't trying to be funny. That's a whole nother uh, uh, episode of podcast. But I do want people to be mindful that when you're out here having unprotected sex <clears throat> and doing stuff or whatever, I do not feel like that is right for you to want to pick and choose what all you want to do or how you want to handle it. It's already crazy enough out here. This is the reason why I say it's so bizarre to me that Texas have a rule about uh, basically making these women not get abortions because of this, this, and that. But then this is the type of stuff that we might end up having to deal with. These people are having the babies and then the mother end up having a baby. She dealing with all type of emotional turmoil. The dad never did even want the baby. So now he's forced to have to pay child support. So instead of sitting up here taking responsibility for the child, they end up killing a newborn. And now he didn't lost the rest of his life. So it's kind of like, I don't not like that saying where uh, I really do feel like that child support is never as much as the dudes probably want to claim or they feel like it's enough to support a child. If you are not a millionaire, if you're not even a thousandaire, please stop complaining about talking about paying child support. And then when you look at your record, they talking about you owe a hundred dollars or seventy five dollars or twenty five dollars a week or something like that. With, please give it up and half of you like not trying to be funny they make you pay child support but you have to be very far far behind i ain't trying to get nobody game but i'm just saying though this young man could have did anything as possible you know what I'm saying to kind of like uh to basically help out in a way to he didn't have to worry about child support you are that evil and malicious and your mindset is thinking like before i support these kids or before, uh, so, uh, support this child, then I'm going to kill this child. And that's scary. That is so scary. That's how I separate say, stop forcing these kids, and, uh, stop forcing your kids on these fathers that does not want to participate in the child life. If they already giving you a hard time about getting a child or they, you already know that they have an issue when it came down to, you know, them paying or supporting the child, leave it alone and leave it in God's hands. Yes, take the procedures, but then also keep in mind that if they do do not pay it. Do not harass it. They all papers and leave it be. Because so, now this newborn child in lost their life. And it's really sad because it's kind of like uh, the baby never got a chance. And I'm pretty sure, you know, I don't know what was going through the man, the, you know, the young man head at the time when he did that or whatever. But uh, it doesn't matter because now you didn't actually lost your life. You didn't lost your life. Because you were so caught up in the why me, or you you were so caught up in the trying to play a victim to yourself. Uh, so yeah, it's very sickening to know that. Okay, mom of missing grad student. Uh, please for cops to keep looking for him. So this is the lady whose son was actually missing, and I want to say that it was also another uh young lady. She was a Caucasian lady, and she was missing also. And this basically went viral because a lot of people was very upset because they did not like the fact of the news people did not report on the black, the young black man did, but they were so quick to jump on board to hurry up and try to find the white uh the the white lady, you know what I'm saying? The young white lady and uh, trying to figure out where she was at. And it was kind of like they didn't keep that same energy when it came down to this black boy. And uh, that was been a big controversy in the situation when it come down in today's times about how it's so many missing black kids and children and adults that go missing and the news outlet and the police officers are not looking into it. But as soon as little Becky with the good her is missing y'all putting it on all type of news uh news and cnn and everything else it's kind of like we have to find this uh this uh 
this white little girl. Oh my gosh, she's missing. You see, they still looking for trying to figure out Jonette. What's the the pageant girl that end up, you know, dying and stuff like that? They still to this day looking for her and trying to figure out what happened to her. But uh, let's listen to what the mother has said of the young man. And we're also hearing from Jelani Day's mother, our own Liam Donnie, who shares her emotional plea to bring her son back home. He's my baby and I just want him to come home. Carmen Bolden Day hasn't spoken to her son Jelani Day since last Monday. Jelani doesn't go like days without talking to me. Jelani would call me two and three or four, five times just to say nothing the illinois state university graduate student was last seen on august 24th his mother says he was furthering his education pursuing a degree in speech pathology he was excited about completing this because he wanted to go on and further his career um Now she's asking anyone with any information to please come forward to help her find her son. If you have any information, I don't care how small or how insignificant you may think that it is, everything is important. ISU Director of Media Relations Eric Jomi says Day's fellow classmates and faculty are working to spread the word as much as possible. The university is also very concerned about this uh, and uh, we, we really hope for the best possible outcome uh, to this. Uh, there has been a lot of outpouring of uh, support and concern and uh, again we, we are hoping for the best possible outcome. And Bolton Day is keeping faith that Jelani will return home unharmed. And we're also keep Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, let me just read something that was on the side of that video. It says, Day 25 was last seen shopping in uh, Illinois on the morning of August the 24th. His car wallet, his lanyard, and he, the clothes he was last seen in have all since been found. An uh, unidentified body was found on September the 4th in the area. He was last seen in the area where he was last seen. His mother is frustrated that they are not receiving updates from the authority about what is going on in the investigation. I don't feel like I'm getting the help that I need. I feel like since the uh, this body has been found that that as I said, is an identified. I don't truly feel like this is my son. It appears that uh, that help has ceased, she said. So I am asking for help from the public. So basically, she was letting it be known, like, yes, they did identify a body, but she does not feel that that is her son's body. And she just wants the same energy that they put into, you know, let's just be real, other races. And majority of other races, we mean white people. Like, keep that same energy. It's sad to say that it's a lot of uh, black African-American kids that has been literally been gone and missing for years, months, days. And it does not get the uh the public attention. And that, that's the most fruitful thing to know that your child is missing. And your child probably has been missing longer than somebody else. And then that's that you know they pop up on the news or these these sites and stuff like that. And then you see Becky plastered all around and these Karen's plastic all around when they go missing within one day. Well, your child be missing for two months, three months, or they be missing for 72 hours, like they say. Oh, make sure they be missing for at least 24 hours as a parent. Who wants to hear that? I don't want to hear that. I don't want to sit up here and waste another minute of none that my child did not contact me. You know what i deal with my child if they do contact me. I would deal on them about contacting me sooner, but I definitely don't want to keep waiting, 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 talk about, oh, well, I got to wait for a whole day before I can report it to the police. And then when I tell you guys, it is kind of like it's a it's a slow boogie type of thing. Like, oh, okay, well, we'll get back with you. So I understand what the lady has said, and let's just keep her in our prayers and stuff like that, because a peace of mind is something that a lot of times people want and I think that she'll probably at least feel better if she at least if she uh if they at least basically identify and make for sure that that's her son versus just saying like hey we found the body and then other than that they not try to they ain't trying to give you no more information after that so uh yes let's keep her in our prayers
let's uh definitely keep her in our prayers and put it out there and stuff like that. So, okay, a man's claim that let's see, man, a man named Corey uh sues 50 cents for one billion over his show power claim show is about his life and that uh and that he's being bullied so basically it's a man that is trying to come out and let us know that he is actually the writer and the founder of power he's saying that he been has submitted all this information to you know certain people or whatever and next thing you know the show power come out and he has not been uh compensated he was not in the input so he's suing and he's fighting and he's saying that now people are threatening him they're trying to uh they're he's risking his life to let it be known like hey i am the writer i am the person that basically you know got the the, the, the story ghost is built on his life story and I was looking into it, and a lot of people were saying, too, they was like, well, that's crazy, because when you look at the evidence that he does have, he does have evidence and proof of him doing different type of stuff or, you know, basically sending this information in at a certain time and contacting certain type of people. All I have to say about this situation is, you guys, please make for sure that any ideas, sometimes you got to keep stuff a secret. Sometimes you got to keep stuff a secret until it happens. And it's crazy because I really want to play this clip that somebody has sent me. And it's about, uh, it's something that Steve Harvey said about your vision. And I'm going to, uh, I, I was just listening to this. So let's listen to what he said. How many times has God showed you something in your imagination that you thought was so wonderful? And then you took it in there to your family and your friends and you shared it with them and they shot it down. You know why they shot it down? Because they couldn't see it. You know why they didn't see it? Because God ain't show it to them. He showed it to you. God put it in your imagination. He don't put it in other people's imagination. Stop telling your visions to other people because they're not going to see it. Why you think you keep imagining opening a business? Why you keep imagining graduating, getting a better job? Why do you keep imagining buying a house? Why do you keep imagining driving a really nice car? Why do you keep imagining getting rich one day? Why do you keep imagining that? Because God is talking to you. He's showing you something that he has for you. He puts it in your imagination, man. See, God is good, man. You've got to understand how good God is. He ain't playing with you. He the real deal. He created you, and then he even showed you what he got for you. You got to start believing in your imagination. You got to start talking to him about these stuff you be seeing. But you have not because you ask not. So if you see the vision, the imagination, but you don't ask God for it, what you want him to do? He showed it to you. Faith without works is dead. So now you got to put it in work. All of y'all sitting in here, you want a better life, correct? Have you, haven't you imagined a better life? Okay, who, who you think he showed it to? He showed it to you. Why you think he showed it to you? Because he want to give it to you. But if you don't work, if you don't ask him for it, he cannot give it to you because he created us with the power of choice. We make choices every day. If you decide that you will be poor, there's nothing I can do. You're going to be poor. If you decide to be rich today, who's going to stop you? Who? If you decide you want to be rich, all you got to do is start. Why not? Who going to stop you? Unless you tell it to the wrong person. Mama, mama, listen to me. I'm going to be rich. Anybody rich in this family? Go in there and sit down somewhere. Get yourself a good job. Oh, mama, you must be right. No, mama could be wrong. Because what you have in your imagination, God didn't show it to your mama. I'm sorry. He showed it to you. Listen to me. If y'all don't do nothing else, write everything you imagine down. Write it all down. Pray about it and watch what happens. Watch what happens.
But let me tell you something. If God can fix me, you have no idea who you're looking at. You have no idea what I've done. Okay, and the reason why I wanted to play that, I thought that was so interesting, you know, just by waking up this morning, a friend of mine, um, shout out to Daniel, he is so inspirational. <laughs> he sent me that, he always sending me like inspirational, you know, things and stuff like that. We kind of go back and forth. So he sent me that and I wanted to put that in there and I thought about, you know, the, the incident with the man with 50 cents or whatever and he probably feeling defeated. And I'm most likely, you know, people, when he was giving that idea, because people will play you short. Sometimes people will look at your vision and they love the idea, but they're really in a mix of trying to destroy your vision. So therefore they can use it in the long term, you know, like later on. And I I never forget I was talking to somebody and we was talking about something and she was just like uh you know so and so was so upset because their friends started for example selling cakes and they started selling cakes just last week or you know they've been selling cake for two or three months and now all of a sudden their friend decided to start selling cake and she's like oh my god I can't believe she's so mad like why is that why is she upset because at the end of the day you know what I'm saying like anybody can sell cakes I mean or anybody in the world can sell cakes and i'm just like that's true but it hits harder when it's somebody that you shared your vision with and for number one they never was thinking about selling or doing this or for number two they don't have the passion so when they look at your passion and when they sit up here and see you know you're making a profit or anything about it or people are responding to you in a in a positive way they automatically want to jump on a bandwagon and it's crazy because these are the main people that don't support you like say for example if you are selling something they rarely probably support you or post you or advertise you but then yeah you want to turn around and start doing the exact same thing that i'm doing and then you so you want to look at it like well it's, it's enough money for all of us we all can get money don't be like that that sound like you're jealous no it just sound like why not sit up here and support my vision that's the reason why you gotta sometimes do it you gotta understand what's for you is for you some people won't even support you until after they see other people supporting you some people won't even sit up here and invest in you or believe in you until they see progress i'm not gonna lie here i said i try to support everybody and it's the people that i have honestly supported just because i see they keep going i see that i'm like golly i remember when they first had started this up they probably wasn't the best person doing it but at the end of the day they keep on going and they got better and better with time and i just go ahead and support them just because of the driven their passion so you're gonna have people that love and support you and, and pour it to you all the time i never believe in telling people that that's a stupid idea or that's never gonna work are you too old are you too young i never make it a point to ever speak that on people because if you ever notice about a successful person they always have a story about how people never believed in them how a person told them that they weren't gonna do this so they weren't gonna do that so i never want to be that person that they look back on uh, uh, people look back on it and be like i remember when i told queen this idea that she didn't believe me and she was trying to discourage me whatever you plan on doing you gotta want it for yourself and sometimes your vision is not meant to be exposed i didn't i didn't know people to go undercover and use a whole nother name a whole nother look just to avoid people knowing it is them because they want to see where is the genuine love and support come from and they have been successful in that uh and their revenue so uh yeah i just want people to know be encouraged in whatever you're doing and whatever you're going going to just know that you are great no matter what so uh, i hope something in this podcast you know you enjoy please like share comment thank you guys for tuning in i really appreciate it Mwah. what's going on everyone i'm so happy you decided to join me on this journey called podcast life we will be discussing topics like celebrity gossip life lesson politics and etc this is a judge free zone think of me as that home girl that is so down to earth that you feel like you've been knowing for years remember over here at the boomerang effect the motto is never judge a book by its cover before opening it up and reading it and remember it's okay to agree to disagree just stand on what you're saying got it period please like comment share give feedback 
anything to help this podcast grow because it is a voice for the people. So love, peace, and unity. Mwah.